welcome Omer Jaffer to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to be back on this stage after uh, two years. Um, Amir and I have been a team at the museum, for, uh, as some of you know. Uh, we're running the performing arts department, and we always wore similar shawls, so this was quite a coincidence. He's clearly the stylish one. I'm still the fresh off the board, fob newcomer, so it took me an hour to iron my kurta and, you know, like, get prepared. And he doesn't need to do anything, he just looks great always. So, anyway, thank you for inviting me. So, Amir has asked me to explain Kavali to you in five minutes. I'm not really sure how I'll do that because it was an hour and a half lecture last night for those of you who were there. So what I've decided I'll do is I'll talk first about what Kavali is not, then just give you some context on how to enjoy and appreciate Kavali, and just introduce the group. So th that will be probably, it'll take me, uh, it'll take the five minutes that I have. But before I start, um, I just need to also um, thank the Aga Khan Museum for partnering with Small World. Uh, the Asian music series that Small World runs every spring is happening right now. This is the 17th year of that running. Uh, you can find a program guide outside. Uh, we are halfway through the series, but some shows are still coming up uh, that might interest you, so please come to that. Uh, I also noticed uh, that uh, they had a slideshow running. Um, the museum has a lecture on Kavali happening as well in August that I'm coming, so one of the lunch li lunchtime lecture series. Please come to that if you have more questions around Kavali. Uh, I can probably explain more things there. Uh, so let's start with what is Kavali and what are uh, what are the myths around Kavali? So the biggest myth I want to bust today for those of you who have not heard this already is uh, that Kavali is also always exotified as Sufi music, something very pure, something very limited to the Sufi groups. It's completely false. It's a marketing gimmick that a lot of people made to exotify the art form to sell tickets. It is Sufi music, but it's not only Sufi music. To put it on that box is not fair. What it really is, is a folk form of love songs. And that's the best way to define this very diverse dynamic form of art. It's not classical music because it does not follow any of the rigid rules that the Shastriya Singeet, the North Indian classical music uh, has. It's free of that form. It's love songs and during a love song, if you're excited about something, you forget the rag. You, you don't forget the tal, the beat, but you do forget the rag, so you, you're, you know, you go and express your emotions through whatever rags are connected to that exp uh, expression. So Kavali is very free form. It's a love song. And it's a love song that usually does have a religious theme. So it could be praise of God, Allah. It could be praise of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, the Prophet's family, or a Sufi saint. But it could be something that's completely relatable at so many levels as uh, a song between two lovers. And the themes are interpreted by each individual. So when I try to explain the context of Kavali, I always think of this Kavali Ustad that I was talking to, trying to understand how one relates to this form. And the Ustad said, it's not Sufi music. The Sufi is not in the music. It's not in the Kavali. The Sufi is in you. And that's a beautiful way to look at it. It's, it's really how you interpret it. It's a very personal experience between you the Kavali, the performance, the Kavals. And to give an example of that, um, there is a Kavali uh, that uh, uh, Hamza and his family sings. It's, uh, the lyrics to that are, Kanahiya yaad hai kuch bhi hamari. The translation to that is, Oh my beloved, tell me, does my memory still linger in your thought? And so if you take that, that one line, and look at the different layers of how the interpretation could be. It could be the divine separation when Adam and Eve were banished to earth and were, you know, they had to deal with the human form. So it's, it's lament that, you know, oh Lord, do you even remember us? It could be you thinking about someone you've lost. So it could be you thinking about an ex-lover. Uh, it could be you thinking about your saint, your guide, your murshid. So there are several layers of interpretation and exotifying it is not really doing justice to the form, it's really limiting it. Moving on, so now that I have destroyed your notion of Kavali, <laughs> 
I do want to share um, an important thing, which is how to appreciate Kavali. And I love giving this example of a Kavali concert that uh, my wife Natasha and I were attending at Kerner Hall, very formal setting. Uh, I was very fresh off the boat, I think a few months in Canada. And the Kavals are saying something beautiful, they're singing something beautiful and just, you know, I couldn't just stay quiet. So I said, wah, ah. And all the heads turn and people like, what, what is this weird guy doing here, who let him in? But that, appreciating is the most important part that is your responsibility as an audience. So staying quiet is not allowed in a Kavali concert. Also in other South Asian art forms, yes. Please keep that energy for the concert as well. Um, and if you're shy, then the other thing that you can do as an audience member is to give money to the performance. That is allowed. It's, there's no harm. Be a bit respectful. Some people like throwing at it, uh, money at the musicians. It's fine, but you know, it's, it's not very graceful. So uh, offering your money as a Nazrana to the performer is very normal. Uh, yes, we're in a very formal setting, but this is Kavali and we don't have to be formal. So, you know, it's part of enjoying. The, the whole process is a two-way process. The more you'll enjoy, the more energy they will give to you. So, so you know, just keep that uh, feedback loop going. So that's really all that I want to share for the context of Kavali. A little bit now about the history of Kavali and who is here on this stage. So Kavali as an art form, we don't really know what the real history is. Some claim that it's more than 30 centuries old. It started from the Vedic chants of, South, uh, of the Indian subcontinent. It's very true. It also has connections to the various forms of Sufi practices from Central Asia. But all we can say for sure is the Kavali that we know that exists today. The one you'll see on the stage today as well, uh, today on the stage as well, is roughly seven centuries old, and it started from the Sufi saint from the Chishti order, Hazrat Amir Khusro. That's for sure we know is the direct unbroken tradition that's been coming down. So the fun anecdote about the origins of Kavali around Amir Khusro. So during the 12th century, uh, there was a Raja, Raja Ram Chandra uh, of Dev Nagri, and he was attacked by the Khilji dynasty ruler, Alauddin Khilji, Alauddin Khilji captured, and they both tried to show off how great their empire is by having a music competition. Um, so that was great. And you know, the first person was, that was brought on stage was the, the local Hindu rulers, court musician, uh, Nayak Gopal. So Nayak Gopal presented 26,000 verses with an orchestra of 1,000 students. They sang for six days in a row, and everyone was wowed. The next person who was supposed to re represent the Khilji dynasty was the court musician of Alauddin Khilji, Amir Khusro. So Amir Khusro was, you know, observing everything, saw the whole performance, saw the whole uh, magic and the effect it had, and Amir Khusro came with a response of 26 uh, lines of verses, uh, verses the 26,000, and he came with the group of 13 children, all teenage boys. And what he did is he improvised around the same raga line that uh, the previous group had come up with, and they did it instantly on the spot. And so the jury was out, Amir Khusro, and the kids had won the competition, and so the Muslims were the superior culture. Anyway, but that story has sort of stuck and has been passed down from generation to generation. So one of the kids uh, from that group, Amir Khusro's group, uh, who was the, the leader of the group, um, he was um, a very interesting um, child because he was mute, he didn't speak, he had a father who was blind, so he would take, out, uh, his, take his father out on a stroll every day uh, to the banks of Jamuna and enjoy the sight. That's where Amir Khusro and his saint would also come. So they saw this loving child taking care of his old blind father and them sitting on the banks enjoying a lot. So the saint uh, Nizamuddin Aulia, Amir Khusro's uh, murshid, gave a prayer to the child and the father. And the child got his voice back, the father got his vision back, and uh, once this miracle happened, the father decided that the child needs to be in service to the Sufi saint. 
So he took the child to the saint and said, the child is yours now, uh, teach him music. You've given him divine voice, so let's use that voice in a beautiful manner. And that child was the leader of that group that sang with Amir Khusr in this competition. The child was the first Kaval, as we know today, and the, the group was called Kaval Bache or the Kaval Kids. So we are very lucky today that uh, Hamza, who's coming on stage, is the 26th direct descendant of that same original group of Kavals, of that same child who was the first original Kaval. And the tradition has been unbroken for the entire period since then. A lot of what Hamza is going to sing is the same repertoire that those kids sang seven centuries ago. So we are very lucky that we have this opportunity of uh, having one of the youngest Kavals who's performing as an independent artist uh, from the Kaval Bache uh, lineage. Uh, and without uh, any delay, let's all join hands and welcome Hamza Akram Kaval and his group on stage. <laughs> 